great. Now that you've had a chance to explore the data set, you can actually move on to training your first machine learning model. And the specific machine learning model that you'll be working with is called a random forest model. So in this tutorial, we're first going to learn about decision trees, which are the trees that make up a random forest model. Then we'll learn about random forest models themselves. We'll understand how to evaluate the model, how to know if it's performing well on this regression problem. And we'll introduce scikit-learn, which is the package that you'll use to actually build and train these models. Okay, so decision trees are a method from machine learning. They're a relatively simple method, but they have many use cases across many different domains. And the way they work is basically that they take the inputs that you give to the model and they ask questions about them. So they try to say, is the value of this input greater than or less than some threshold? And if it is, you go down one path of the tree. If it's not, you go down another path of the tree. And then at the second tier of this tree, you'll get another question about a different feature of the model, possibly a different input. And you'll split along that dimension as well. And in the end, you get an output of the model that is a prediction. So in this case, this might be a decision tree that's performing classification. So is this input of class A or class B? And you get a yes or no. But you can also use this for regression. So in that case, what you get at the bottom here are different values that would be the output of the model. So these decision trees learn to solve an input-output relationship, learn to fit that input-output relationship by making a series of binary decisions. To train these trees, you have to decide that that learning algorithm has to decide what the best features, the best input features to split are and where that split should happen. So if we're gonna take in you know, the temperature in 2015, what's the threshold that we wanna put as the dividing threshold here to split into different branches of the tree? All of those things are the free parameters of the model, and those are the things that the learning algorithm will learn from the data. What we need to decide about the model, that's called the hyperparameter. So in a machine learning model, there's the free parameters that the learning algorithm learns on its own. It sets those values. And then there's hyperparameters that you as the model builder need to set. So for decision trees, we can control the depth of the tree. That's one of the hyperparameters associated with the decision tree. And the depth just means how many splits do you do before you get to the output of the model. So here we're doing one split, two splits, three splits, and then we get to the output of the model. So that's something that we can control when we build these decision trees. Generally, if you have a deeper tree, you might have better performance because if you look, for example, here, this tree that only splits twice, there are only four values that it can output. And so in a regression problem, it's only going to be able to predict four different numbers for every set of inputs that it's given. And the true value here, the true temperature, for example, takes many more than four values. So you want a model that can give you a good number of outputs so that it can better match the data that it's trying to learn to fit. So we now we understand what an individual decision tree is. Let's talk about what a random forest is. So a random forest model is basically a collection of decision trees. So when you combine a bunch of different models together, it can be a way to get better performance. So when you do this, you can average the output of multiple different individual models to give you an overall output that might be more accurate. So this is known as bagging or an ensemble method in machine learning, and you can do it with many different types of machine learning models. When you do an ensemble of decision trees, that's called a random forest. And the randomness comes from the fact that each decision tree is trained on a slightly different subset of all of the data that you have. So you kind of break up your data into smaller parts, kind of randomly sample data points, and each tree is trained on a different random sample. And so each tree works a little bit differently and gives you a slightly different output. And when you average those all together, you can usually get better performance. An important thing to know about these methods is that they're nonlinear. They can capture a nonlinear relationship. So if we look at these kinds of different types of relationships between X and Y in these plots, Sometimes you will find a linear relationship between things and then a linear model like linear regression might work fine, but in real life a lot of things are nonlinear. And so methods like decision trees and a lot of other machine learning methods are really great because they can capture these more nonlinear relationships. Okay, so once you train your model, you want to know how well it's performing. Is it actually doing a good job of predicting the temperature in 2050 based on all the inputs that we give to the model? So how you evaluate a regression model is usually with the coefficient of determination. This is also known as R squared. And basically it is a measure of how big the errors in the model are compared to how variable the data itself is. So when you have a model, so for example, if we were using linear regression and we we're just using a simple line here to predict y from x, then the errors would be the distance from the actual true data point to the point on the line where that line predicts the y value to be. So that is called the residual. And we want to compare the size of that deviation between the true data and the model prediction to the overall variability of the data itself. 
And so this is the equation here, and you can look more into how this equation is calculated and what each of the terms mean in the tutorial code. But it's important to know that one is the best possible value. If you have negative values, then your model is performing very poorly, worse than even kind of guessing the average value of all the data points. Okay, so finally, we're going to talk about the practical details of how you're going to train these models, and that's using scikit-learn. So scikit-learn is a Python package that's widely used across academia and industry for data science and machine learning. It has a lot of great features. A lot of people have contributed to it. It's a really great resource to know about if you want to do data science and machine learning in any domain. So when you build a model, they're called estimators and they're Python objects in scikit-learn. Well, you first define the model and then once you define it, you can fit it to data. It also has built-in functions for evaluating the model's performance, making new predictions from the model. And what you'll want to know in particular is that to get this coefficient of determination, the R-squared value for your model, you need to call the score method. Okay, now you get to try fitting your own model.